As many of us, especially those of us in the education world, are doing these days, last week I attended a little webinar, a little conference uh, held through Zoom. And this webinar was on racial inequality. And one panelist urged us to have those difficult and uncomfortable conversations. Conversations about race, about class, and about equity and inequity. And in the midst of her exhortation, she, she said a little line that just resonated with me as I read the readings today. She said, it's okay to be uncomfortable because you don't change if you are comfortable. I think there's some wisdom, <clears throat> excuse me, there's some wisdom in this. When I go and lay on the couch and watch TV, I am very, very comfortable and I don't want to move from there. And yet when I begin to be a little uncomfortable, when I start to get those stirrings of hunger in my stomach, that's what's going to make me get up and change. That's what's going to make me go to the pantry and get some chips. It's okay to be uncomfortable because you don't change if you are comfortable. And I bring all of this up because I think our readings today are all about being uncomfortable. And they are about being uncomfortable in such a way that we can change and that something new can come out of it. Consider that first reading. It's from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah, who really is the reluctant prophet, who resisted his prophetic call at first. When God first called me, he said, oh, no, 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 I'm too young, and I don't have the words. And he just wasn't comfortable with what God was calling him to do, what God was calling him to say. And we see him being very uncomfortable in his role as a prophet. There are plots to kill him. He will be thrown into a cistern. All because his message was difficult, he was calling the people to radical change. He was calling the people to return to their Lord. And they just didn't accept it. And in today's reading, we hear that he is an object of laughter, that everyone mocks him. He even says he's been duped by the Lord. After all, it's God who got, them, got him into this mess in the first place. And yet, despite all of that, Jeremiah embraces the uncomfort. He keeps proclaiming God's message. In fact, as we hear today, he has to proclaim it. When he tries to bottle it up, it just wants to explode out. Because it's a message that he knows will lead the people to God. Jeremiah is willing to be a little bit uncomfortable so that the people might change themselves. And then we have our second reading from St. Paul, where he says, Offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Be pleasing to God. Be transformed by the renewal of your minds. St. Paul, I think, is inviting us to look at our lives and to see what needs to be changed. And in that, it's very uncomfortable. If we really look at our lives and say, hey, maybe there's some mindset, some attitude, some action that I need to change, that is unsettling because it's calling us to something different. It's difficult, it's uncomfortable when we have to confront our own flaws, when we have to confront our own sins and failings. And yet we know when we do that, when we sit in that uncomfort, that that can lead to change because it leads us closer to God and it leads us closer to God's will in our lives. And then this brings us to the gospel. This brings us to Peter. You might remember that last week, Peter made his great confession of faith. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And today we hear Jesus saying, get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. Peter is unwilling to be uncomfortable. Last week, everything was all good, and yes, I am with the Messiah. 
But today, when Jesus says that he will have to go to Jerusalem, that he will, be, that he will suffer, that he will die, that's not what Peter expected. And Peter's kind of saying, whoa, 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 this isn't what I signed up for. Let me just go back to fishing something that is very comfortable. But Jesus invites Peter, and I think he invites us, into the uncomfort. He says, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Lose your life and even forfeit the whole world. Because in doing this, you will find life. Jesus is reminding Peter, reminding us, that if we allow ourselves to be a little uncomfortable, well, that can be a life-changing moment because it leads us to God. It leads us to eternal life because it will help us to look at our own lives and see what exactly needs to change. Our readings invite us and even challenge us this Sunday to be uncomfortable. Because when we are uncomfortable, I believe that will lead us to some change because it will lead us closer to God. It will allow us to look at the gospel and to allow that gospel to penetrate our lives. And when we are uncomfortable, it might even allow us to let go of ourselves, to let go of some of our ideas, to see where God is leading us, where God is calling us, to what the gospel is inviting us into. So I think our readings today all lead up to the question, where is God calling you, where is God calling us to be uncomfortable? Or put another way, how does the gospel make us, how does the gospel make you a little bit uncomfortable? Well, I can only really speak for myself, but in doing so, I, I bet I speak for a lot of us here. The events of this past summer, the events in Wisconsin of just this past week, they make me uncomfortable. And I think that is a good thing. Because these events have caused me to examine my own attitude, to examine my own biases and prejudices around race, and around racial inequality. And it also challenges me to decide what concrete actions does the gospel, the gospel of life, call me to. You know, it's very comfortable for me to stand up here and say, we respect all people, everyone is made in God's image. That's really easy to say. But it makes me a little bit uncomfortable when I'm challenged to stand up for those who are oppressed, when I'm called to challenge the status quo, to call out injustice, and even work to change some structures. That makes me a little bit uncomfortable because it means that I need to step out into the difficulty, but in doing so, I am embracing, I believe, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Several years ago, as a young brother, I worked down in Cincinnati, and I worked at a high school, and I was the service coordinator. And as doing that, I did a lot of social justice programming. I did a lot of teaching with our students around issues of social justice. And I worked very closely with the Cincinnati Coalition for the Homeless. And one time, I had to go to their offices right downtown, right in over the Rhine, and just drop off some stuff. And outside of their offices, there was a group of men. Most of them were homeless, and most of them were people of color. And as embarrassing as it is to admit, I drove around the block three times before I could muster the courage to embrace the uncomfort that that situation brought me to. And that was very much, I think, a, a defining moment for me of learning that I can say one thing, but it's a whole lot different when I have to step out and do something concrete. When I am invited by the gospel to step out into the uncomfort and really embrace those individuals. Now, I will say it led to me forming some great relationships. 
It really led me to learn a whole lot. And I think it led me to really change my life. Sometimes we have to be uncomfortable so that we can change. Sometimes we have to be uncomfortable so that we can transform ourselves. Sometimes we have to be uncomfortable so that we might deny ourselves and take up the cross so that we might follow Jesus. Following Jesus in his way of love by bringing glad tidings to the poor, tidings to those on the margins, those who are discarded by others. By proclaiming liberty to captives who are shackled by institutions that exclude them. By helping to find freedom to those who are oppressed by the sin of racism, by prejudice, by all of those social evils that plague our world. We are invited to pray and discern today where God is calling us into the uncomfortable to see where does the gospel call us so that real change, the change inaugurated by Jesus, might really come about in ourselves and in our world. In 1857, on the 23rd anniversary of the emancipation of the West Indies from slavery, Frederick Douglass gave a speech, and I think it speaks to what the gospel calls us today. He said, if there is no struggle, and we might replace that with uncomfort, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet deprecate agitation are those who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the awful roar of its many waters. Of course, this is not easy. It is difficult. It makes us uncomfortable. But Jesus didn't promise us comfort, but he promised us life through the cross. In a similar vein, St. Oscar Romero in a radio sermon once said, that is what the church wants, to disturb people's consciences and to provoke a crisis in their lives. A church that does not provoke crisis, a gospel that does not disturb, a word of God that does not rankle, a word of God that does not touch the concrete sin of the society in which it is being proclaimed. Well, what kind of gospel is that? I know that these are difficult words to hear. But if we, if we allow the gospel to disturb us, if we allow Jesus' teaching and example to make us a bit uncomfortable, then I think we will begin to see change in our own lives, change in our world. Because we will allow the gospel, we will allow Jesus to penetrate our lives and move us to action, actions that will build up the kingdom of God. In just a few moments, we will celebrate the Eucharist, which is the memorial of the cross, the passion, the death and resurrection of the Lord. And out of the struggle of the cross, out of that discomfort, comes the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We encounter the risen Lord. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, I think we need to be a little uncomfortable so that we can change so that we can grow closer to God, so that we can find true and lasting life, not only for ourselves, but for all of the world. It worked for Jeremiah. It worked for St. Paul. It worked for Peter. And it can work for us too. It's okay to be uncomfortable because you don't change if you are comfortable.